why are all you Windows nerds uh, obsessed with trying to install your hacker OS on everything? I mean... And welcome back to another Linux Teamcast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin, that's Jordan, that's Pedro, and you at home watching us live, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Yes, that's right, Shut Rom Dynamic on Twitch, saying lovely things in our Discord and our IRC, and on Twitch itself, because we got a handy little bridge that usually works. I, it, You know what? The bridge stays up pretty decently it's the uh, other one that when you send the wrong command it crashes right yeah yeah it's the one that strider and mpr are working on <laughs> Odd, odd, oddly <laughs> enough i built i built that locally when we were, I, I took it off of the shitty machine and i ran, i ran it locally on my machine and it worked fine so of course it did of course it did man strider magic man you, you were hurting my <laughs> my brain because i understand the feels jordan was troubleshooting this after we get done with the show after yeah after mm-hmm. show and I know that feels that Jordan was like, fuck this thing. I'm going to get this thing figured out. But just being tired and your brain's doing that type thing. It, you, yeah. Uh, yeah. You just can't hold everything in RAM, which is mm, quite nope. unfortunate. Ne- I need a, need a, need a defrag. It's yes. good contents. Yeah. yeah, it was fun to watch. So what's everyone been up to? I know um, I should have take, taken your advice, Jordan. Oh, yeah? Jordan warned me. And Jordan's like, man, you need to spend the money wisely. Don't order shit from AliExpress. I'm like, man, but we can save so much money on a new Pedro if we just get it from AliExpress. This, this one's getting old. And mm-hmm. I, Your mom's getting old. What? I, I, I'm just saying, my mom's like 82, dude. My mom's been old. So, 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 so yes, yes, she is. Like I said, like I said, in need of replacement. Um, so, you know, free shipping, all that. We had the pandemic holding off and I'm like, okay, fine. New Pedro finally shows up. And I don't think I can do anything with this. <laughs> oh, I can totally do something with well, that. Well, okay, okay. They got to remove the armatures first. <laughs> hey, I haven't fully unboxed it. Fair enough. But that slows right. it down a little. It is sentient, so uh, it does have feelings. I turned it into a table. But outside okay. of that, it, it's just, I don't think we're going to be able to use it for the show. With those pindly legs? Really? <laughs> it, I, mean, I mean. They got the blue jeans requirement right, though. They said it will only they, wear blue. I mean, they, wearing they, gray they, jeans they do. today, and, <laughs> and, and 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 the extra connects limbs mm-hmm. would uh, re- really increase the utility there. Had so some, had some replacement parts, uh, get the hair color and all that. But yeah, it, it's uh, I don't think we're able to pull it live. We'll, we'll just go back to the original uh, Pedro vendor and uh, do it the right way. Yeah. But well, maybe we can do one in Lego. I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've learned. I've learned my lesson, and no more frivolous. <laughs> Order, order the real Pedros. Don't order knockoff Pedros is the moral of the story. <laughs> Except no substitute. Um, dude, um, one thing I do want to talk about is, uh, uh, have you ever been in a relationship with a corporation that has treated you horribly, but you keep coming back for more? No. No? No. Pedro? Actually, that, that, that's not true. Nintendo. Okay. okay. The Pokemon okay. company. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I like, worked for one. <laughs> they treated me like crap, and I kept going back no, because no. they paid. Ah, I, see. <laughs> I, I, I messed up and watched. Uh, everyone knows how much I love Black Magic at this point, right? After giving them half a grand and them genuinely checking out four days short of a year of getting back to me, like, oh, hey, look, we figured out what the problem is. We're using that card right now. Turns out it's very stable after you add one little bit to the kernel that took a year to figure out. And um, yeah, they did a uh, new video, um, like a live demonstration of some of their live gear they're coming out with. I'm like, ah, fine. I'll just watch it, see what type of overpriced, stupid stuff they have. Like, here's our web presenter HD for streaming to all these services that does like crazy good encoding and all this other bullshit. I'm like, wait, that's that's a straight up dedicated streaming box. That thing's going to be fuck you expensive knowing black magic. And it's 400 bucks. I'm like, fuck you, motherfuckers. Um, <laughs> but will it work with your Threadripper? Doesn't that? It's static. It's standalone. You just feed it a video. No, 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 no. They added the extra difficulty in there. They check your network. It has <laughs> failover internet built into it. It has like a minute and a half buffer. If something goes down, it'll just save the life. Just keep chugging along and it can bounce over to cellular data. And like, damn it. So yeah, 
Stay tuned for that. That that uh, you might you might get me on this one. Fate flying spaghetti monster. You might because uh, <laughs> when it comes to the thirty sixty and that that streaming rig will, pro- will prolong the life of Thread Ripper, and that's mm-hmm. a lot cheaper than spending two grand. So I don't know. I still got to get over. I got to choke down the um, giving black ma- magic money again. So we'll, yeah, we'll see. How maybe, that maybe maybe another Patreon goal too. <sighs> Maybe, <laughs> maybe I, I I don't feel any better giving anyone else's money to Black Magic at this point. Fair, fair. Oh, so you've uh, you you've been uh, hello nursing, man. Yeah, I've 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 been doing my part as a sexy nurse. All right. Um, been reading about data platforms. Man, there's a lot. I I've. I'm do, I'm doing consulting for for a for a med tech company and they do a lot of data analysis and I know nothing about that. So mm-hmm. this has been a lovely like wall slamming into like reading the books and being like I know what these words mean. <laughs> Not in this order, but yes, I know this. Yes. <laughs> I'm 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 just like desperately look, desperately looking for like Java, Tomcat, database, something, it's something that, <laughs> that I can grasp onto and be like, I'm "Okay, so that's backwards. what this is." All right. Yes. Oh man, Pedro! Is there anything exciting? You played some Dark Souls, but you didn't die enough to. You only died like five or six. I times. did. Uh, it was my deaths were in the um, single digits, so I'm sure everyone was disappointed. But uh, you know, I managed to successfully stream Dark Souls three without it uh, crashing. Which, uh, <laughs> when it first came out, that was not the case. Why don't you at all? Um, <laughs> when I got back uh, to the house today after I got done uh, playing around with Jordan, I watched. Uh, they were doing the, you know, the uh, game speedrun marathon type thing for mm-hmm. Cure. And somebody was like wrecking Dark Souls, man. He was like, doing some exploits that got one sword that just two shot at everything right at the beginning of the game. I'm like, man, if Pedro played like that, I'd watch it. <laughs> There's a few of those. Uh, I tried uh, the um, zero or one intelligence build in Dark Souls 2. And yeah, you can absolutely with uh, one intelligence just cast the most powerful spells in the game and destroy everything in one hit. Mm. That that, do that they, do that's they do the yeah. <laughs> Do they do the Fallout thing where they give you all the fun dialogue options if you have low int? <laughs> dialogue options? No, the, the NPCs in Dark Souls, uh, they always give... Is trying to pre, kill your ass uh, a dialogue option? Because that's not the only I mean, one it I've can, ever it gotten. Can, yeah. It can be, yeah. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, unlike the horse, which is immortal. That's how it comes back. The, the, the horse is immortal and very, very taciturn. You can try to listen for its whispers, but you might just go insane. It's the Steam Linux. Oh my god, it's changed. It's ugly. It, it is. It. New download page. <laughs> Ooh. It's a whole new downloads page. That That's it. A that's the big one of the new Steam page. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it is. You may remember the uh, fancy download screen that someone found a while back and posted a screenshot on Twitter, and then people eventually figured out how to access it uh, because it was already there. It was just not being used yet. And at the time, the speculation was that what we now call the Game Gear uh, was going to be called the Steam Pal. And uh, well, the Game Gear uh, is. Uh, you know, it's only going to start shipping in December at some point, hopefully. Uh, but uh, the downloads page is here, so you can go play with it. Uh, there's, uh, oh, that that that's a good screenshot. <laughs> hey man, hey, listen, I I was I, I was I was throwing some old gems out there. I got Earth mm-hmm. twenty sixty six in them. When, I think the first game to get delisted from Steam. I don't even yeah. know what the Venlon one and Radical Heights. I'm like, all right, uh, yeah, I. Yeah, play yeah. around with it you can right like you can drag stuff around which is nice yeah not the 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 having to reorder downloads in the old steam downloads ui was a bit of a pain in the ass because it's like you do one and then you do the other and then you do the other and you gotta like t- hit the buttons in the exact order you want them and now you can just drag and drop shit which is convenient i've never been in that yeah. situation to be honest with you i've always had the uh like just download when, you, when you're done you're done yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but no, like I, if you're trying if you're trying I, I to install like, a game and there's like some updates or something and you want it not want to wait for those, then yeah. Yeah, it's like the whole you're downloading a big game and you have updates waiting. Oh, I can play that game while the uh other one downloads. So you click the thing and it goes right to the top. It's like can 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 I have an option to not 
do that? Can't you just like mm? before? Couldn't you just like pause <laughs> the ones you didn't want downloading? I, I can, mean, like you have to queue them it, all first and then pause them individually. I, I, I mean, like it, it, the... it, it, it's a, it's a lot simpler in this UI than it was in the old UI. That's uh, yes. <laughs> well, no, that was. Uh, I am glad that you pointed that out because that is something I've never paid attention to. It's just, like, mm-hmm. just download, it's done when it's done. All right. And yeah, this uh, this release also comes with a few Linux specific fixes. It comes with the new version of the Soldier runtime, which is the if you have the option set to prefer system libraries, you're using the Soldier runtime, and uh, it causes uh, LD preload to stop spamming uh, because it keeps trying to load the overlay UI library onto a 64 bit game, and it's a 32 bit library. So it just spams that as long as the game is running because it keeps trying. So that uh, has been uh, obscured as far as the output goes now. And the pressure vessel, it can actually see the USR share NVIDIA folder now. So it should make for some NVIDIA specific improvements. Because remember, kids, Proton lies to your games. Uh, the XVK specifically, it lies to your games. It tells yeah. it that it's a, an AMD GPU. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the stuff under user share NVIDIA is all like the, the application specific profile stuff. So now, mm-hmm. I can, now that I can uh, mount those in the containers, I can read it and hopefully you'll have some better performance in your games on nvidia in jordan i don't Steam Marathon, i don't maybe? care man i want better performance <laughs> on my dick <laughs> well then you're 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 in luck because there there was there was some kerfuffle you know we were talking about the steam dick the the new mad last week and there's like oh 12 1280 by uh Peasants. 800 at 30 yeah, why, why would you ever play a game at that resolution? So Mr. Loop Guru, he comes out on Twitter and he says, uh, not well, that, that, that too, but uh, the, the, well, for, first off, there's also the, there's, there was also the question, oh, oh uh, is this using Wayland? Tweet. Okay. Oh, yes. The second tweet. Uh, wh- whatever. So yeah, 30 FPS target is the minimum floor. They're saying uh, as long as uh, the game can hit that on the Steam, on, on the new Mad, then it's going to be fine. Also, that's probably the best setting in terms of like performance versus battery life, which, you know, is valuable when you're playing things on a, on a handheld, like the Switch runs on a, on a reduced performance mode when you're on battery, because, mm-hmm. you know, fuck, you want to actually be able to play your games for more than five minutes before your battery dies. Um, there's also some uh, questions about whether or not this is going to be using Wayland or X. Uh, the main uh, session is going to be uh, using we, we don't we don't know just yet, but the uh, the gaming session is going to be using Gamescope, which is a uh, Wayland compositor. I guess it's cursor from X Wayland, but um, it's uh, it allows for a distinct screen to be spoofed uh, on AMD graphics, similar to how Prime works. Um, well, without the whole GPU offloading thing, it just does it all in the main screen. Um, but yeah, so there, there we go. There's some questions answered about the deck. I also wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see some like wine on Wayland stuff, get fast tracked into Proton very, very soon. It's going to be interesting. And, um, even, uh, Strider finally got around to discovering what game scope is. I saw him in discord the other night. <laughs> and He's he like, didn't oh my shut God, up about it's it. For amazing. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> finally glad you found out. Okay. And this, this was after months of, uh, Wayland's the devil, Bobby Boucher. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, uh, the XComp MGR fork for Wayland effectively is um, Gamescope. And I kind of want to try Gamescope for just regular desktop use. Mm-hmm. It probably like the Steam uh, compositor previously. It's not going to be recommended for uh, desktop use. But literally anything that will g- get me rid of K Wins compositing, I'll take. Pretty you're gonna, you're gonna need an AMD <laughs> GPU for now, though. Uh, they're, they're saying once yeah. uh, Nvidia starts supporting accelerated uh, X Wayland, uh, that it will be supported there, and that and that's kind of the thing. Um, you're still gonna need an, some sort of X compatibility on the Steam Deck, uh, but this is done in a way that it's aimed at reducing memory copies and latency and overhead. So hopefully, we should be seeing closer parity to what we get in a native X. Speed. Uh, one thing that will hurt your speed, though, is all the malware that you're going to be downloading on your Linux handheld. Oh, Ben, that's only if you install yes. Windows on it. <laughs> well, you can install Windows on it, uh, but uh, someone actually brought up a uh, concern on Reddit. Uh, so, uh, discussion about malware on Linux. With the release of the Steam Deck and the Windows 11 new requirements, I believe that the Linux community should have a serious discussion about malware. And he says, it's not going to be the year of the Linux desktop, but, uh, you know, 
Linux as an operating system is still exploitable and there are there is the occasional uh, exploit that goes hidden for years on end despite it being open source and having a bunch of people looking at it. So um, yeah, we've enjoyed uh, thus far uh, relative security through obscurity, but with the Steam Deck being, you know, everyone's talking about it at this point and everyone's aware that it's like, oh, it's running Linux. Okay. So... It may be a thing. Honestly, my opinion, I don't think so because the average user won't have to worry much about it because all they'll do is they'll start it up, download games, maybe download some workshop stuff. Unless Valve allows malware to, you know, come down the pipe of those two avenues, which has happened in the past psst, psst, more hey than man, once. Hey, hey, Pedro. Hi. Mm-hmm. Um, check this out, man. Check this out. I, I, I just need you to write this to your SD card. Okay, and I, I want you to just, just <laughs> pop it into your Gabe gear, and I promise you, man, you can play all the games on Steam. Just, just do this. That, that's a that would be a Steam exploit, and I'm sure a Valve Incorrect, would be very motherfucker. Happy. That would be a wetware exploit. <laughs> I mean, I mean, well, like, yeah, yeah, changing how the thing behaves to yeah, the, the person, as changing a, how it behaves, yeah. <laughs> yeah, appealing to its greed, and like, hey, free games. By the way, root mm-hmm. kits on this, but here, just run the thing for me. Okay, thanks. No, for, what, I mean, no I, mean, I, I, hope, I, I, I hope the Steam session is not running a root session. Otherwise, <laughs> Val, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, but I mean, like, yeah, if the, if the new mat is successful, <laughs> we could we could definitely start seeing some targeted malware for the device, um, especially like GPU based malware distributed from like bad game to servers. That's like that's real spooky. Um, but I, I would think most of it's coming from like sketchy mod sites. A lot, a big draw of the the new mod is, hey, you can play PC games, which means you can play modded Skyrim. So if you want to play the Elder Scrolls Sky Dick, go ahead. Um, but I mean, it's also it's also running Arch. So like most of the software you would want is either available via the official repos or from R. But I mean, if Joe user really, really to Ben's point wants to install uh, aimbot.dll.zip.so.rar from sketchy site.ru.exe. I mean, at a certain point, you can't really control for people who will actively walk into traffic. But uh, I, I, th- I think for the most part, like this, is, this is a pretty TiVo eyes device. You, you might be. Like there, there, there may be vectors, and there, def- there's definitely worth. Uh, there's discussion that is deserving to be had, especially in the realm of like GPU based malware. But I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Right? Like, show us some examples. The, and- the more I throw down with this, the more I think about this. And Valve, I'm sure Valve's probably had an internal conversation about this. Maybe it is a feature they've just not mentioned it. Maybe they've mentioned it. I've just not paid attention. But I hope that the Gabe Gear comes with a feature a la a Chromebook, like Power Wash, where it is a very simple Vulcan nerve pinch and it just wipes and resets. Well, and I mean, that, that would work very well with what Valve has with like cloud saves and shit, right? Like it mm-hmm. doesn't matter. You mm-hmm. can wipe out all the shit on your device. Your games are still there. Your saves are still there. So yeah, d- definitely, definitely that could be a, that could be a very handy option to have. On <laughs> but board. the interesting bit of this particular Reddit thread were the comments. One of the top ones was, uh, where has window has security, uh, through obscurity. We have security through having a new distribution being released every five nanoseconds. Well, <laughs> and I the mean, one below I mean, that, that's security harsh. through incompatible glibc versions. <laughs> and the one immediately below that help my malware doesn't run on Waylon. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty good. Well played. <laughs> well, if, if if you're having a problem with your malware where running on Waylon, you might consider just taking that steamy dick and uh, popping a couple of windows on it, man. Because, hey, there's no reason you shouldn't run windows. You immediately take it out of the box and hack up whatever you can get on it. Beat Windows 10, Windows... Actually, there's quite a reasons. Quite a lot of reasons that we've been over on the show, and we've been over them enough to where some other outlets have picked it up. This is coming from Windows Central. You can see all this in our show notes. But if your plan is to slap Windows on your dick, you have a bad plan because um, it will be the reverse Linux adventure that we're all familiar with. Like, hey, I wonder if I can get Windows running on this normal Linux PC. <laughs> You're, you don't have any experience with that. Um, have fun. But I just got to say, it's strange times. Also, also, seriously, why are all you Windows nerds uh, obsessed with trying to install your hacker OS on everything? I mean, really, <laughs> it'd make no sense. Yeah, yeah. no, uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of this and uh, people who just can't be asked with Linux, you know, going out of their way to be asked with Windows. 
<laughs> it kind of reminds me of the people who insist on uh, installing Android on their iPhones. But uh, I mean, like, yeah, I'm sure you could cobble together some Windows drivers for most of the more exotic components. Shipped I think on the this Steam is more deck. like trying to install people who install Windows on the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Wh- why? 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 Why would you, why would you want that? <laughs> No, uh, but yeah, like I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure the drivers exist somewhere. I'm sure you could actually get it working, but yeah, I don't, I don't think it's worth the effort. Right. And to the article's point, there are a bevy, a plethora of windows based portable computers like this. If you really, really want that, then go get one of those that's designed for windows and has the drivers and don't complain that the steam deck is terrible (laughs) because installing windows on an EMMC card is garbage. I don't know. Uh, Like. I don't know. It, there's going to be a lot of that. Mainly, I've seen way too many people say, yeah, I ordered one. I'm going to put Windows on. I'm going to have a mobile. It, the only reason I say this, I, I personally, if you know me at all, I give negative fucks about operating system you run. I'm way past that point of like zealotry. I'm just like, run whatever you want, people. We can all get along. I'm just saying you're going to have a bad time, which I'm also looking forward to because then you're going to put that shit on eBay. But speaking of eBay, Mm. <laughs> scalper does scalp man Eurogamer's got a little thing that ebay threw down uh ebay has clamped down on steam dick <laughs> i like that clamps down on steam dicks uh scalpers yeah they've uh, cbt baby they've kind of rolled out and they're like yo um you, you just can't do it because you gotta have what is you have to have an actual thing you know because immediately you need to be 30 to days before sp- actual yeah. release yeah and yeah you need to have the so physical item multiple listings on the steam deck uh on ebay charging more than val's asking price and listing hardware for sale for a thousand pounds uh ebay has scrubbed these listings telling your gamer they were in breach of its pre-sale policy which like, that's news to me uh listings must guarantee the item will be posted within 30 days of purchase oh okay yeah, yep. um, and with the dick not out, not due until December at the earliest, this was not possible. So these pre-orders will not come back up until around the holidays. Then they'll pop right the fuck back up. And uh, oh yeah, there's yeah, people yeah. still I mean, actively I'm, trying. If you look for it, they show up. They get canned very quickly, but people are trying. And stupid, and I mean, it, stupid people. The, the the root of the problem is still there, right? Like come December when they're available. They're going to be back up on here. They're going to be buying up all the steam dicks and trying to sell them for like two, three times the price of them. Mm -hmm. Like that's just Mm going to happen regardless of what eBay does. All valve needs to do is maintain the exact same steam account requirements that they had when the um, reservations went up. Uh, It'll make scalping a heck of a lot slower because you can't just make a new steam account and immediately reserve one. No, you have to have an account that's X amount of uh, time old, and you have to have a product at least in your account. Unlike, you know, with the GPUs where people were creating new Amazon accounts and new new egg accounts and just buying 20 of the GPUs or 20 of the uh, 5900Xs Did you and see the 5950Xs. The, kid that found the 15 year old kid that found the loophole at Newegg. The Newegg. loophole? Yeah. yeah. Oh, turns out on no, Newegg, well, they, they had an <laughs> issue with the store. If you were building a custom PC, you can add all the parts. <laughs> Well, at the end, you could add or remove parts. So you could add the video card, which they would sell to you. You know, they had it in stock Mm -hmm. if you were buying a bunch of other shit mysteriously. And you could just delete everything but the video card and they would ship you the video card. Uh, (laughs) And he got the video card. It's like, okay. That that, that genuinely reminds me of that uh, that guy who went into McDonald's to like the self-serve kiosk and like ordered a burger to just get the button. (laughs) What? It's just like burger, no meat, no ketchup. Oh, no okay, pickles, yeah, no. I get it. Um, so yeah. this this <laughs> does have me thinking though. With um, Valve's, not got a ton of experience with hardware, but you know they they've gotten their beaks wet. You know, how will Valve handle the demand for these things if they let's just say get half as popular as a Switch? And when I immediately think of the Switch, I think of a device with Nintendo with decades upon decades of uh, distribution, manufacturing, tooling, all that fun stuff. The Switch has never really been in stock since it was, it was released. The same, it was kind of the same thing with the Wii, too. The, when the, that the came Wii got to the point of, like, you, you just go pick one up. The Switch is like, maybe yeah. one's in stock, maybe one's not. Yeah, Nintendo also has a strange dance that they do with the scarcity. artificial scarcity. Yeah. Yes, yeah, uh, that they well, uh, themselves ami- create uh. for zero fucking reason. But so, yeah, there's that. One thing, <laughs> one thing this does show is that Valve's very... Very basic bitch system. Um, 
shows everyone else uh, just to be full of shit. That that proves that how straight up easy it is to kneecap scalpers with something mm-hmm. that basic account verification. Maybe, hey, you need to have an account created within the last 24 hours. Is it a perfect solution? Nay. Nay, it's not. But if any retailer, on a lot of anybody <laughs> could have implemented something similar. This is not, you know, brain science or anything like that, you know, during this shortage over the past year. But they chose not to because fuck y'all's money's money. We don't care who it comes from. Mm. Yeah. Rawr. Okay. Uh, well, you know, yeah. Fer- 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 Feral might say otherwise, though. Uh, so, Feral Interactive, they put out a, a little tweet in response to um, the new Total War Troy game coming out. Uh, they're saying that it's coming out on Mac, and uh, it's coming up on Mac. And someone asked, well, where, where, where Linux? And they said, well, you know, hey, this whole, this whole pro- Proton <laughs> thing means that we don't really need to, like, port games anymore. So oh, no, no, they straight up hid behind the the epic exclusive there. It was put on nah. hold because it was an epic exclusive and we're yeah, not yeah. resuming development. Yeah. So I what to to me that looks like <laughs> that what, what whatever total war contract they had for porting games to Linux is up. Uh although I do really Probably. have to say like um like I, I, I like the people at Feral. I, I think they've they've done good work. They were carrying a torch when very few others were were doing so. But how bad is the situation here when it is easier and more performant to completely re-engineer an entire OS and graphics API than port specific games to Linux? Because they've done that with Proton, and mm. the, the the end result is far more performant than anything Feral has put out. And that's not that's not mm-hmm. to knock Feral because I don't know they they definitely don't have the same okay. level of resources. I, that, I'm also going to throw this. Valve. I'm going to throw this. Yep. Um, Feral to just let's just put it on the board. They were using their own version of a wrapper in DirectX. Yes, so in, in DirectX. It's not like they were competing. We're, we're talking about one translation layer versus another translation layer. I know, but 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 uh, again, the more general case here. Vis- vis-a-vis Wine, Proton, uh, DXVK was better than whatever specific shit that they could do tailor-made for a engine, uh, which is, I don't, I don't know. It, it, nev- it never really sung well for the future prospects of them porting games on Linux. Well, they had their system, and like the big thing left out of the entire equation is uh, it wasn't profitable. And well, yeah. that that's the reason you do or do not do something as a company, because you have employees to pay, and they have families and stuff like that. And turns out no longer profitable and it makes sense but the one thing to take from this because you do have to imagine over how many total war games uh we we got tired of playing them after like three we're like okay it's it's, Mm -hmm. it's, sorry (laughs) total war is your thing i'm glad you get new content maybe this pisses you off maybe it doesn't but um to me as as just a scrub smooth brain it's it's the same fucking game with texture packs palette swaps and shit like that you got to imagine with as many that Feral has done that they have a streamlined tool set to pull this out, pop this in, and get it shipped. Very, very minimum. This tells you that that's not even worth their time at this point. Like, yeah, we I don't mean, even yeah. think we can turn a profit on just in the time energy sink into that. We're not going to get an ROI on this. So, yeah, and I mean the the total war at this point is basically all they had Linux wise at that point. And to Ben's point, it's super narrow appeal people aren't buying the linux port of total war just because like they don't want to play total war some people do but mm-hmm. that's a fairly small it's a very population niche thing of it's gamer. like yeah. uh yeah. i've always was curious about the formula one series like, whoa. that that's a small and then, then we've ran into other things like it being linux only multiplayer and like well if i use oh, proton yeah. i can play with everyone yep. well yeah and, and, that, and that was to, the big to, one and and feral like what what have they been putting out lately? If it was if it wasn't a total war game, maybe maybe we'd get like an F one game. And the Warner Brothers contract that shit is gone and evaporated. Yeah. So we're like the the Mad Max port you can't even buy that anymore. Right. Uh, Batman. Yeah. Really. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll get Batman. some Tomb Raiders. Feral, feral, feral <laughs> served a yeah. niche during its time, and and yeah, mm-hmm. they, they they did. We, and we, I we very much appreciate them yeah. bringing Tomb Raider when they did, because the first one, uh, Proton wasn't a thing. The second one, Proton wasn't a thing. Mm-hmm. 
by the time Shadow of the Tomb Raider came out, people started to do the AB comparisons. Yeah. Like, oh, the Proton version runs a heck of a lot faster. That was mm. the uh, uh, you got problems. <laughs> um, but <laughs> don't don't mourn Feral Interactive, not in the slightest, because they're going to have plenty of um, Apple M1 and ports to deal with on that side, and uh, plenty of Tegra ports, a la Switch, because that and mobile stuff. Because immediately mm. within like a month of the. Uh, Proton being officially launched, just following Farrell's meeting, they start talking a lot more about Vulcan, a lot more about Switch, a lot more because they're, they're not dumb. Farrell's been around for almost 20 mm. years. They know how to run a company. They saw, like, okay, we need to move over here. So I wish everyone the best. No hard feelings, except for the bastards at Frozen Bite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of no Linux support. Ports, man. Uh, yeah, you know, from trying one, trying two, trying three, and what we're currently currently kicking ourselves through the taints uh on trine four because we're determined to beat every single one of them uh jay larja larja laria laria whatever um has this to say developer at frozen bite with proton being as good as this native support is not very high on our list without actually trying the native version of modern uh, i would recommend proton i haven't tried it but yeah sure go try that uh <laughs> <laughs> if Linux gaming takes off, for example, because the Steam decks become a huge success, then we'll have a reason to consider not so low on resource ports, which may and probably does change the picture somewhat. So, yeah, effectively what I've been saying for the past two weeks. Uh, at the moment, we have Xbox Series S, S X, Trekkie, 360, porting, targets, and uh, something, 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 frozen bite. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. But first things first. Uh, we... We were all kind of shocked when we saw like the first Trine, right? On Linux, like yeah, what? That, huh? that, that, okay. that came out of nowhere. Yeah, Tr- multiplayer. Trine one and two. Like, boom, yeah, it dropped, <laughs> and uh, you know, those native ports, Trine one, Trine two, they came out at a time when we basically actually no, it was it was Trine two. We we didn't even get yeah, uh, Trine two was Trine the first one, one that came out, then and then they, Trine one came edition. out later, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's why it dropped. I didn't even know what a Trine was until that. <laughs> they weren't that great of ports. They they worked. I mean, let's face it, even on Windows, its native platform, it was buggy as shit. We threw the Linux layer on top of that, then the multiplayer layer. Go back and we, oh, it was rough. It was rough not to go down that hole again. But we took what we we could get back in those days. And you know what? Hey, we were grateful. We were. I'm not, the problem with the ports was the resources dedicated to Linux ports at Frozenbyte was one person who happened to be a fan of Linux that put out our Linux ports, maintained our Linux ports, and he no longer works at Frozenbyte. Mm-hmm. So that's why we did You can figure out that he left somewhere between Trine 2 and Trine 3. <laughs> yeah. He was uh, just after, doing it as a uh, fan Shadwin. of Linux. Yeah. <laughs> Shadwin. And yeah. that, so I wouldn't even get there because there's the, the capacity, uh, the know-how to do Linux uh, at Frozenbyte is non-existent. So... Mm-hmm. To the best of my knowledge, maybe there's somebody there who's like, fuck you, man, they just won't let me. Uh, that could very much be the case. And um, yeah, yeah Trine 3 I, I and do. Trine 4, we, I've just already written Frozen Bite off a long time ago. I'm like, no. Nah. Yeah, no, I do wonder if uh, Trine 3 would have been better if Proton had been a thing by the time we were going through it. Trine 3 was busted, <laughs> no, no. though. Yeah, there, 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 there's, <laughs> there's some fundamental problems with that game that Proton's not going to fix. Like yeah, it wasn't the two D you know, game the, that we all wanted, <laughs> or or, or, if you or maybe they, the they whole spent a oh more yeah, time. someone else, the one person was porting it to Linux at the time, and we could have just played effectively on parity with the Windows version. I wonder that wouldn't have made it a better if it game. Would have been no. slightly less. Pedro, jank. Pedro, that game didn't have an ending. <laughs> Like the, yes. the gameplay wasn't <laughs> we, fun. We proved that. <laughs> Another problem with Trine Three is it was supposed to be part one of at least a three part series, and they charged full mm-hmm. price for it. And they're like, "Oh, it's uh, that was supposed to be episode one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 it's a twenty dollar episode <laughs> one." You say, "Well, oh, you know what? We're just we're just gonna drop the ball on that." Trine Four doesn't even acknowledge it either. It's mm-hmm. just like, yeah, it well, happened. it's four now. Psych. It's a different story. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Let's let's talk some good things about Proton though. 
Yes, Proton, and especially the community that has sprung up around it, from uh, SteamDB to Proton GE, uh, now up to version six thirteen. It's uh, it's got a bunch of new things. Uh, it had a, a uh, no Steam mode for Final Fantasy fourteen, so that you can launch the non Steam version of the launcher. Uh, I guess that's a thing that people wanted, which, you know, cool. Uh, they rebased the Proton SDL game patches on top of the sa- staging patches, so that fixes a bunch of different issues. And, of course, uh, the big one is FSR. And the way that they're using FSR is kind of crazy. You know how Proton has the full screen hack, which, regardless of whatever resolution you have your your game set to, it just upscales itself automatically to your monitor's resolution, whatever it's set at. It doesn't actively try to change it and fuck around with the resolution and then it crashes and leaves your desktop at like 640 by 480. It's happened. Everyone's gone through it. But with the Proton hack, that doesn't happen. And instead of just doing the upscaling the way that the hack used to do it, now it uses AMD's uh, Fidelity FX FSR. That's insane. That's an amazingly, that's just freaking genius. That, yeah, that that's perfect. And on top of being the default scaler, it then uh, uses contrast adaptive sharpening, you know, like uh, VK base alt, uh, just CAS, all the things. I think the default uh, strength is five, but you can set the strength to whatever you like if you don't like the extra sharp image for some reason. You, you can adjust that. That's... Yeah, very well. All done. Of that <laughs> is definitely one hundred percent neat, man. Uh, I did play around with the bar because resizable bar was introduced by this, and uh, Joshy said, "Hey, I tried this. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, I got another like 15 percent performance bump on top of the uh, DX twelve enhancements." Um, it, it didn't do fuck all for Tri- um, Horizon Turbo Ginger. I tried it, <laughs> ran the benchmark like seventy two, seventy three for. Uh, didn't fuck around with FSR. So, uh, Jordan, you got some AMD cards. Did you mess around with it? Not yet, but I also need to buy, I guess I need to buy a copy of Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, there's also, they, they also added some uh, creative sim linking here to better support cloud saves because sometimes L- Linux isn't the only place where there's inconsistent folder locations for your save data. So, mm-hmm. um, to, be- to better sync with cloud save, uh, Eggy has added some sing link, some links to the wine bottle so that there's a better chance that these, uh, save files will get scooped up. Nice. All right. That's very good. Tinkering with launchers. Yeah. Seam tinker tool. Uh, that's that thing you can toss in front of your steam games and it'll have a little pop-up window that will let you Just do some SDL configurations. It's- percentage command percentage. There you go. <laughs> yep. It's uh it's kind of like proto it's kind of like wine trucks, but for everything else. And hot damn, this adds a bunch of stuff. Uh they added uh support for ejecting in-game camera override DLLs. They added support for forcing Unreal Engine 4 development consoles. They're working on a Steam Deck UI prototype because you mm. know obviously you're gonna wanna dick around with this and oh, your, yeah. your Steam Deck, right? <laughs> to tweak with your settings. Um they also have a, they also added uh this one's pretty neat. It is a per game ability to null route all tracks traffic so you don't have to worry about the games phoning home so if you're worried about if you're doing some graphical testing and you're worried about like getting vac banned or something you can be like no you don't get internet too bad um they also have some uh, vr enhancements for people who are trying to use this in steam vr can't speak to it because i don't have a fucking toaster to strap to my face but you know it's it's pretty cool um they're they're quite a bit of improvements hopefully they can get the um like the the the, the steam deck stuff is in really early prototype so I wonder if uh, Valve's going to send these guys a, uh, a, uh, a a unit because that would uh, th- that's some that's definitely something that they should probably be keeping a close eye on. I mean, they, they could send them yeah. a, like the case, and when they open it up, just roll the hell out of like a Game Boy in there. I'm like, oh. no, they, they just send them the Smock Zero. <laughs> Make it work display. on this. Oh, <laughs> Smock prototype, burn. Yeah, some. <laughs> But yeah, the the thing that jumped out at me was the uh, configuration difference menu wh- where you can actually see from the default and what the current configuration is. If you're trying to help someone like get the same exact setup as you or you yourself are trying to get replicate the setup on a different machine, that's very useful. That's very useful. 
And uh, I mentioned VK Basalt earlier. Now uh, they have uh, basically reduced VK Basalt to what it was uh, originally because they have added initial support for the Proton G slash Wine FS, uh, FSR. Mm. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Now, uh, I'm still working my way through uh, Black Mesa. Because I said I'm going to finish that on stream, and I've just gotten to the uh, fuck box of the most epic proportions that my old ass doesn't. I need to take months break, and I will come back to it. <laughs> um, maybe we can have that experience. Uh, more, more of that experience with the uh, Half Life Two. Yeah, the Freeman uh, Two Enhanced Edition. Uh, well, a complete remaster from the look of things. Uh, it is fan made, obviously, from the exact same people who created Half Life Two Update. Which, uh, if you never played that one, it was the it was effectively a Half Life Two with better lighting, better shadows, better visual effects in general. But it was still the exact same game. Here, well, they are promising a remaster with the Half Life Two Remastered Collection. And uh, you probably saw this show up on Twitter. Um, Steam DB was all over it the moment that it got listed, even if it didn't have a store page. And yeah, it, it may be worth replaying through the game with this when it comes out for more than the ooh, shiny. Because that, that was yeah. the uh, only thing that the previous one had. <laughs> well, th th this one also has uh, some additional enhancements. They're doing gameplay fixes. New voice cast, mm -hmm. including Pedro's best friend, Ross Scott. He's going to be in this one. Uh, not as Freeman, though. Not so that's playing be the character weird. that we all want him to play. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Right. yeah like Dude, <laughs> they, they should make him do the like what the South Park kids did to uh, Clooney. Clooney's like, I want to be in South Park. He's like, oh, you can be a dog. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there, there's an episode where all the roof, roof, roof is George Clooney, so it, they should make him a head crack. It, 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 was the, it was the movie. It was bigger, longer, uncut. Either. That they did that. Okay. Uh, and? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, just, I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, uh, Val, I mean, like Ben mentioned Black Mesa. Valve has been pretty cool about uh, yeah. remakes and remasters and fan works going up, especially on Steam for sale. So unlike any given Nintendo or Games Workshop fan content, you'll likely see the end of this project. I mean, as long as Valve looks at it and they're like, all right, that that that's good. And we're going to make money from it. So, all right, fine. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> it, gets, it gets more people on Steam where they will buy games and we'll get a cut. Speaking so. of making some extra cash, we talked about the Portal Shooter Slipgate last week. 1.0 launch, uh, launch date was delayed until August uh, because the developers received 10 million fuck mothering dollars to fix congested. We need congested <laughs> servers, but <laughs> Oh, no, our <laughs> server Someone is congest our so servers. Congested, so choppy. Need million dollars. <laughs> please. Yeah. I mean, we, we can uncongest the servers for like three, three and a quarter. Don't worry about it. So they write in a tweet. Uh, we spent all night optimizing, but uh, after talking to AWS, I like those calls. Uh, we learned our database, read us, uh, can only handle 65, 536 concurrent players. That's what we hit last night. So good on them. It's very popular. Completely free to play. Shooter, by the way, available on Linux using Vulkan. Made, made in Unity, yes. Uh, we're working on a Q system to let 65,000 plus people <laughs> and until we remove this Pedro Mateus, what in the world could possibly cause such a strange, mm, strange, I so wonder if precise they were storing. Number. Yeah, I wonder if they were storing their uh, number of players, of concurrent players, active in-game in a 16-bit int. Uh, because that no, is exactly this, the value. <laughs> no, so th th this they, th they, 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 they spilled the beans. This is a Redis problem, right? They hit their connection max. And so... I, I I pulled up I pulled up a Redis config file just because I wanted to check for uh, check for myself. So by default, your your any given Redis server is configured with about 10k op maximum open connections. So they already increased it 65k, which is a fairly substantial increase. And I think the max that um, Elastic Cache will support because uh, they're using Elastic Cache in AWS because they said it's Redis and Amazon. Uh, so yeah, moral of the story: sometimes you're not ready. Your little project's not ready for media coverage. That's yeah. Thousands of people that try and access your you, shit. You genuinely got to think like in one week they went from like a fuck around like, hey, man, this is our like free to play game. We're going to try to make it free. And it's got portals. It's and the, what? Holy fuck. Um, it's, it's the Reddit <laughs> hug of death, right? Like Reddit got a hold of it. Dude, now everyone wants to download and try the shit. Yeah. Like, thing. I wish them the best of luck. Hopefully uh, $10 million doesn't fuck them up because that's enough money to that, fuck some people. That, up. That, that should pay for at least like two, three weeks of Amazon costs. Yeah, yeah. sounds about right. <laughs> Retroarch, 197's out with a bunch of new things. 
They it is, especially if you're on PlayStation 2 running RetroArch, because now you can play Game Boy Advance games. Uh, but but if you are on Linux, uh, you only, only, only get an issue with XDD screensaver where um, RetroArch would start messing up uh, because a window title was not properly set. It's being set now. They do a check for it. So you should be able to be using uh, your screensaver of choice. But there's a bunch of other stuff that they added as well, um, especially for like a lot of the weird esoteric hardware that RetroArch su- supports. Like none of this is actually available on Steam because you can't install Steam on these on these platforms. But I guess they're just using it for all their status updates now. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you, I you, mean, you, that you version's can go- on Steam, so technically qualifies right but you can't run it on your place you can't run steam on your playstation yeah. or can you? uh, yeah. anyone made an x86 emulator for uh yellow PS2? dog yeah. Yeah. you know if a company i don't know with a new microsoft damn there would be the slightest slightest fuck all chance in hell but i would say before the new microsoft showed up i sony is, seems like a company before they got in bed with epic that just getting in bed with Epic shows that they're good open to things like mm, money. What? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, the, 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 but for uh, crossplay, it took them quite a bit of uh, well, convincing. Yeah. Well, that's consoles yeah. being consoles because <laughs> exclusive. That's how we sell these things. Yeah. Right. Mm, I don't yeah. know. It, it's our platform. We, we have that captive audience. And uh, I kind of looked up back to the retro arch thing. I kind of looked up that uh, Game Boy pocket looking thing that they had uh, there. Uh-huh. The retro mini RS ninety because yeah you can run open dingix uh, on one of them so I looked it up it's like oh you can get one for like twenty bucks yeah I'll pay twenty bucks it's forty pounds no <laughs> well no. Th- th- those of you on the Wii U can <laughs> rejoice because yes. now you can install seven zip Finally. on your Wii U yes <laughs> Finally. national nightmare is over so uh, everyone. Dicks. I just want to go ahead and invite, uh, after the show, Pedro, myself, and Jordan, we're going to go to our summer cottage and have a snowball fight because yeah, this is the we're season. We're going to have to clear out the ice. <laughs> Rust, the game that was uh, without much fanfare, where Gary's like, you know what? Fuck this. Uh, it's no longer on Linux. Deal with it. Uh, I might give you some refunds, maybe. I don't know. Uh, has said, has said. Now, what was the original one here? Um, Gary getting people's hopes up. I doubt we'll be seeing Rust on Linux natively, which it formerly was natively. Uh, Gary probably play, paid a bit for EAC disabled server. Proton called it a day, blah, 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 blah. Gary himself comes back. EAC are working on it. We're working with them to make it happen. Rust runs good on the dick. Hmm. Well, yeah, as, yeah, as the long original as Gary doesn't have was... to do... <laughs> as, as, lo- as long as Gary doesn't have to do any work and you can, you can just say that he supports... He has, Steam Deck support now. Obviously, he's gonna he's gonna claim that as a win, right? Well, he does bring up the EAC though. They gotta do, that, that doesn't that's not gonna work out of the box. They gotta make sure something there's got there's something in the equation between us and the EAC and the working that we're not filled in on yet. Mm-hmm. There's something yeah, true. They, and uh, Valve have been in talks with the EAC people since 2019. So uh, yeah, we're still waiting on Valve time on that one, but. Still, if it hasn't shown up yet and everyone's been shouting about it for however long it has been yeah it no (laughs) it needs more jordan can i interest you in a commodore 64 version of carrion sure why not all right i'll I'll take it yeah uh so uh carrion you might remember it from the game where you play as carnage from the spider-man show uh comic book thing uh yeah you, you spider-man put, you, show and small <laughs> spider-man <laughs> puppet show you yes. know every, everyone everyone's <laughs> favorite punch and judy spider-man uh yeah so uh it, you you basically play as carnage from spider-man you're a giant goop you traverse uh you traverse things you eat them you're basically the monster from the thing uh and they have added uh they've added some prototypes so you can play uh two of the early builds the early prototype um and one of the other ones of uh, what was originally, I think it was like a game jam entry that was like the kernel of the, the carrion core mechanic, which is pretty neat. It's always cool to see how these games sort of progress from like the original concept to the final thing. And it's it's radically different. It looks like an Atari oh, game. Oh, yeah. I mean, it looks like a C60. It looks like uh, by this time next year, there'll be five D makes of it available on whatever. <laughs> we'll have an NES version. <laughs> 
I, I love seeing stuff it like this. It will be just loaded. <laughs> it is genuinely fun to see how the functioning mechanics get uh, plotted out into something that kind of works. Kind of like watching uh, Braid, the early versions of just the rectangle kind of bouncing around and reversing itself, which eventually became Brain. Like, wow, that's always very fascinating. And that's really cool of them to uh, throw that up there and let you play around with it. Yeah. It requires a lot of courage to not just put your project out there in the first place, but then have a game that's really good, people really liked, and showing everyone how the proverbial meat sausage was made. Well, I I, I think it's maybe a little different. <laughs> once once the game is out, like, if, before the game is out, you show the prototype, people will be like, what the fuck is this shit? Now they're going to be, mm-hmm. once the game is out, people will play it, they'll look at the prototype and be like, oh, I kind of see where, where it is. So I don't know. <sighs> After yeah. 5,000 years, this fucking segment is over. My God. That that was quick, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready Time for the flies. other half of the show? <laughs> no, power play through we're that. we're about to get started. Uh, yeah, this, it's, that was significant, but uh, it's thanks to... Everyone watching that we feel justified in spending um, however long that was uh, just look at talking this. about look at look, look at this we, Whoa, we straight justified? up did it. no no ah, let's let's drag that back <laughs> right, because right, we, right, we, right, we, right. we did a under and over with a screenshot provided and Pedro's like whatever the time was I don't care Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I I don't remember what the time was <laughs> it, it it was fifty minutes in like twenty two seconds or something 50, it was, okay there we go it, it was it was, the, it was, it was a you lost. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. I oh, lost that. Uh, but over something that always lets us win <laughs> is you. Yes. You make us the biggest wieners of all by giving us money. You can head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast if you want to do that. Becoming a patron gets you some cool stuff like access to our Discord channel, which you can also get from subbing to Twitch. Uh, you can get access to the show notes at an executive producer or death note or above. If you're an executive producer, you get access to the pre pre super shows and at 730. It's that extra Linux gaming content that and- we do. Even if you're on Twitch, you get access to your Discord. And if you happen to be on uh, Discord at 7.30 when we started the pre-pre-super show, and I straight up fucked up and posted the executive producer's yeah. uh, video link, there was your free bonus for the month. Yeah, so, yeah. Some, sometimes sometimes you get some cool shit like that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you can RSVP for game streams. Uh, I'm doing multiplayer games on Thursday. Then sometimes those multiplayer games on Friday. You can show up and play games with us. Yes. Uh, yesterday, Ven was doing uh, Trackmania. So uh, me and was... Pedro were. It was kind of fun. Uh, yeah. We invited everyone Yeet. to show up. Uh, Lex Nier showed up. Uh, Foxy showed up. Uh, Rohit came and partied with us. And they, that's that's just a fun game. Now, unfortunately, we didn't have uh, some rando show up and uh, spectating on the chat, watching us, not on Twitch, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and completely like, oh no, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. Just backseat gaming the whole way through. Straight up, no, no voice or anything. He, he was trying to coach us, not realizing like we're just try, trying to have some fun. Guy, calm down. <laughs> well, um, the, what, what is this? The Streets of Rage playthrough? No, oh, you're gone boring wrong. Right. Oh man. Uh, we, we got we got to thank our brand new Patreon back, who is now front and center. Uh, in They're second. back. I also got to thank. Uh, I also got to thank Fluttershy. You can you can cheer us bits on Twitch. Uh, Fluttershy twenty seven seven just gave us five thousand bits. This bits make our five numbers broadcast. So bits. <laughs> that's like five dollars. That's pretty pretty fucking yeah, tight. tight. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we got stores. Not as tight Store as our shirts. Game stock. Yeah, cover your shame with <laughs> our faces, or maybe Frank's face, or maybe a Hell Elks logo. Who knows? Uh, you can also cover your filthy filthy mouth with a mask. Or your filthy filthy nipples with some stickers. Uh, so yeah, buy our merch. It's good stuff. Sh- confuse your friends. Confound your enemies. Um, walk around with my face on your chest. That totally... Right in the middle, too. Yeah. <laughs> right in the middle. Put me right in your cleavage. Uh, and we got we got wish zones. Uh, if you go to linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse on the support tab. Mouse down to the wish list. I have one. Ven has one. Pedro has one. If you buy a stuff off the wish list... You can send us notes, which we will read on the air. And if you send Ven some stuff, you get to become a hard to read name behind his head. I don't know. Um, it's been a minute. I decided uh, this week we we're going to judge Pedro's wish list, which um, oh. <laughs> it, okay. it looks like we're dealing with audio stuff, audio stuff, audio arm. What is this? A drinking, drinking you <laughs> fucking poser. What? 
Ten, some, it's some just a one liter capacity. Thing. I'm it, it's like literally a... just looking at the one liter capacity. That's it. Oh, you edge lord <laughs> with your utility edge lord knife. Go. Uh, all right, Iron Wolf. It's more of the portable. Wait, wait, wait. Um, was that was that was that pliers? a ram cooler? This thing. Oh yes, yeah. This, that was a yes. ram. That, that's a ram cooler. Okay. You know, in Pedro's defense, Pedro Mateus has apologized for that thing being on his wish list on multiple occasions. <laughs> Didn't he get ram that came with one at one point? Yes, it's he that same more. RAM kit. It, he, he <laughs> so I can have 32 fans. gigs. But yeah, no, don't oh. buy me any of that stuff at that price because that that's stupid. Mm-hmm. That that the, Those particular RAM kits, they shot up in price like crazy. So that's why I haven't bought it. That's why it's still there. <laughs> uh, as Jordan was saying, back here is our beautiful Find Up Standing Cannibal Wall version 3.0. We got Carl, Mike, Basil, Arthurin, Linux Drew, Aldius, Noctilus, John, maybe? John, John. in Egypt. Yep. See, look, yeah. I can read it. Ha. Deal with that. If your head's not blocking it. Yeah. Uh, I had to lean a little bit. And uh, yeah, we got a studio wish zone as well. If you want to end up on that wall, but it's going to fucking cost you, son, because there ain't nothing on this list. <laughs> I'm definitely down to things like, oh, I don't want to buy that. That's expensive. I'll end up buying it anyway. But I did find a preamp with a mojo button. That's all I got to say about it. That's. Probably pretty bad of me. You ever just find something like that? And you're like, oh, that's stupid. I want that. Yeah, all, all, all the time. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> we do want to thank each and every single one of you. I'm making this show possible. Loud, live, independent, ad-free. And we've been doing it for a decade. And uh, we want to keep on going. And that's how we can keep on going. Chugging along. Woo-woo. Train of the whistle. So so how, how's 3DFX going to keep on going? 3DFX is back. From the dead, bitches, <laughs> guaranteed brand new cards coming out this Thursday. For one ninety nine. No, fuck, I'm getting sound bites. I want to get both sides of the story so I can use either one. <laughs> Three, there's no way 3D effects could possibly be coming back, according to this post. There, we covered. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I ran across this earlier today um, from at 3D effects official. This was posted uh, July 30th. The day of yesterday, 3DFX Interactive is coming back 20 years later. Prepare for a major announcement regarding our return this day of Thursd. Thor's. Mm. Thor's day, yes. <laughs> now, this this is going to be described as probably a quite epic troll. Clever marketing or possibly a bold damn claim. Whatever makes this... Like the one thing, here's the one thing I'll, I'll give this. Um, now you might know is you're old, get off my lawn. Uh, actually you can come hang out on my lawn. If you're old, you started out with 3d effects. I had the original, uh, diamond multimedia voodoo one and worked all the way up to the 5,500, but Nvidia pretty much cannibalized what was left of 3d effects at the time. 3d effects did a dumb. They competed against their board partners. They decided like, Hey, you know what? We're going to make our own cards, you know, kind of like the NVIDIA founders series and all that shit, <laughs> except, uh, they, they were undercutting the people who were getting reference designs. And then they were learning how to deal with logistics and shipping and all the other stuff that the video card company really doesn't need to do in maths. And, uh, yeah, NVIDIA yoinked them to which, uh, you know, some people pointed out, Rightfully so. Rightfully, um, I do believe, uh, yeah, you, you might know him. You might love him. It's like NVIDIA <laughs> owns 3D effects. Uh, nothing but a uh, hollowed out <laughs> shell. The dried up face has been removed. And this is exactly how he speaks, by the way. Um, <laughs> now worn by, prepared to pretend something. Don't get your hopes up. Dun, dun. So I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Investigative reporting time from old man Vin. I headed over to the United States Patents and Trademark Office and I typed in 3D effects. And it turns out, all trademarks for 3D effects, including 3D effects interactive, expired in 2016. Mm. Does that mean we can get one? Does that uh, mean that we can fuck over the it, new 3D effects? It means that <laughs> we they, can register the yes. 3D effects <laughs> trademark technically. Uh, yes. <laughs> now, a couple of news outlets have like did the speculation drive to zzz, and pull the cord on that. Like, ooh, we're getting new 3D effects, or what could this possibly mean? And I had to think about it. I did, and uh, I was reminded about a post uh, posted on Hot Hardware uh, from February, showing off this. A legendary 3D effects Voodoo 5 6000 gets a modern revamp, an amazing reverse engineering effort. That's right, 
going from AGP to PCI, not PCIe, but PCI. The guy completely reverse engineered. You can still buy the CPUs or GPUs for this. They're about 20 bucks a piece. So no cards were harmed in this. And this was the legendary quad GPU version. And um, about a thousand of these cards were originally made. And they've been floating around on eBay and places like that since. But they're not really usable being AGP. So you need a modern system with like PCI in it to uh, get some of that goodness. Look at that. Look at that big power brick. That's that's real. That That's an OG one. No, no, no internal power supply for you. No, man. Now, yeah. the reason I'm bringing this up, th- there's a point. Uh, I, it's ignorant. Like, okay, this guy made this. Let, let, let's see. What, what, what's his plans? And it turns out that he's planning on selling these. He's planning on selling the Voodoo 5 6,000 PCI and... Um, it's like, hey, are you going to produce a box for this card? Yeah, we're still preparing the box design. How many are you going to make? Uh, they're getting shipments together. The first version is only going to be PCI. And like he's getting ready to ship these things. And you know what? If I had to put money dollars on something, that's what it is. That that That's a little bit uh, of clever marketing um, behind this, of getting the hype built up. So, so these are, these are just, um, they're like repro video cards for like hobbyists, right? Like essentially yeah. if, if, if you want, if you uh, want like, you a know, Voodoo, like those, you those kits that you can buy effectively like old computers, like the Apple II, you can just buy a kit. That's a motherboard. Well, yeah, that you well, that, that's, 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 how, the that's how they used to like come, <laughs> but like mm-hmm. you, yeah. you wouldn't get an assembled back. You'd have the kit, but it's so, all yeah, like done the, the, fan made. Yeah. yeah. The, <laughs> Yeah, the, the, this this is just a hobby part. If you want, if you have like, if you don't have an AGB port, but you really want to play some old Voodoo. The uh, thing about these, they're probably not going to be cheap. I'm going to say because these things are, according to him, effectively bit perfect. Like even the errors and visual artifacts, he's been able to reproduce on these things that yeah. you would normally see, and because they're pass through cards. So uh, then again, I'm going to be honest. Like most of you, I want like. 3D effects to kick the fucking door in and be like player fours back in the game, bitches. <laughs> Welcome to the Voodoo 2021. <laughs> Dude, I want stream dicks and 3D effects. Well, I mean, you could move to New Zealand and then you'll get all that you want. I could. Or I could just buy an AMD card. <laughs> I, maybe. No, we need maybe. a glide. We need a glide to a Vulcan translation layer. But yeah, we before can call we an get to that. Glide. Literally exists, yeah. Pedro. <laughs> There's a uh, a new AMD card. Uh, it everyone's been speculating about. Oh, when's the 6600 going to come out? Well, it's not out yet. The 6600 XT, on the other hand, that one's been officially announced. Uh, the MSRP, of course, is uh, 379, which is uh, somewhere in between the 3060 and the 3060 Ti. Auto playing video. Yeah, it's uh, it's PC game. <laughs> And yeah, it is the low end um, RDNA two, but of course. Wait a minute! Wait a minute, Pedro. Are you it, saying that this is the budget card? Uh, yeah, um, that is the, the cheapest current Pedro, gen. Pedro, card. you don't. It's okay, you, hang you, on. You don't I mean, e- clearly they've messed up. They've mislabeled it then, Pedro, because on their page they're saying it's three hundred seventy nine dollars. It's a typo. Got to be. <laughs> no. <laughs> That is, uh, yeah, the uh, lowest end spec of the current 6000 series is 380 freaking dollars. Now, the claims that AMD makes as to the performance actually put it slightly above the 3060, except for uh, Horizon Zero Dawn and uh, wait, Cyberpunk, wait, 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 I suppose. On, At that price, you mean the 3060 Ti, right? No, the 3060 Ti is very much on par with like the Hitman 3 uh, and the Battlefield 5 scores that they're showing. So it is kind of in between the 3060 and the 3060 Ti is for a price that's very much in between the two as well. So, eh. <laughs> well, I mean, it's more expensive than a 3060. It has less memory yes. RAM than a 3060. It lacks in the encode and like a 3060. And I'm looking, even even though I, the, the very generous. No DLSS. <laughs> Very generous, generous distances on this bar graph I'm looking at. But when you look at the numbers themselves, that, that's a bunch of fucking rounding errors. Eh, rounding error in 
like average uh, frame rate is two percent and below that the some of those are significantly higher than that i i'm going to go ahead and say factor in this is from the manufacturer a uh, yes uh, amd has uh claimed they're not intel performance i didn't see any uh, asterisk some... wait hang on <laughs> yeah uh, okay <laughs> but uh, it's been questionable and they have been caught in the past, but actually with the latest, with the 6900 and the 6700 series cards, the predictions that they had when people actually got a hold of them and they ran the benchmarks, they could uh, very easily attain those same numbers. So I guess they learn. I don't, I don't know. The price is still stupid though. Are you buying one? <laughs> no? Why not? I mean, outside of a, uh... Yeah, that, that's expensive because welcome to 2021 20, where the budget yeah. cards are uh, almost $400. <laughs> Yay. You yeah, don't no, even get the, a, for the low end one. <laughs> you don't even get a PlayStation's worth of compute units either. Uh-huh. So, no. No, this is for your 1080p gaming, your sub $400 <laughs> 1080p peasant. Yeah, gaming. this is like, the 1650. Uh, I mean, the RX 570. I mean, l- 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 yeah. Here, here's the thing, though. <laughs> if it's complete dog shit and mining Bitcoin, you may at least be able to buy and use this card. Uh-huh hundred percent because this all boils down to availability is this the 580 with a racing stripe and some fin stack to it um but <laughs> here's what's really got me interested uh you know this is the card the 3060 was originally designed to compete with but as you might notice nvidia kind of jumped the shark on this one they thought it was coming out maybe a little sooner than it did so they released 3060 and like what the fuck are you doing releasing this 12 gig card in video who you what's this competing against <laughs> this is what it was supposed to compete against um months and months and months and months later it's finally um almost about to be out now what keeps me interested in uh, all of this and i've been following this is because i've heard from two different sources and i just repeating rumors that nvidia realizing that oopsie doodle uh that's probably a card that doesn't need to be in the market right now because you know people are going to buy that instead of all of our other shit because it's a 12 gig card. Mm -hmm. Um, They kind of roll that back and they've been sitting on the GPUs for, because that's a different GPU for the 3060s, not, you know, spreading that love around for the Adam AIBs to make their versions until this was getting closer to release. So that's what I have my Mm -hmm. fingers crossed on that. uh, We're going to see some ready. uh, 699 for what? (laughs) <laughs> for the 3060 <laughs> even that's a very good price because they're currently like 700 or in, 800 uh, yeah but <laughs> six, I, I, I know. See, you say that from a gaming perspective i see a 12 gig card for rendering for 600 bucks not a bad deal yeah, yeah. maybe uh, period there's nothing might, might, nothing might, might, might be able to play some roblox on it no, I won't. I need a new version of DXVK for that. Yeah, you you would. This is uh, Dick's Fix version one nine one. You thought they were done? It, you're wrong. Uh, so they've um, if they've uh, added some uh, stability issue and performance improvements for the D three D nine locking rewrite. They did. Um, they've also removed a bunch of uh, support for Mesa nineteen and older. You should be on Mesa twenty or higher. And the big one is you can. Uh, you can now actually play Roblox on NVIDIA GPUs using Dixvix, and it doesn't actually run like complete poo-poo. Uh-huh. Uh, actually, there's actually there's a couple of uh, NVIDIA fixes in here for uh, Ryzen, the first uh, Risen, the first Far Cry, Eat Earth Defense Forces, and GTA 4. So hey hey, lots of improvements. Um, no no, re- I, I guess yeah. We're at the point where DXVK is basically feature complete. These are these are these are fixes for yeah, enhanced zoom and enhanced now. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, th- th- this is the point where, okay, uh, the only thing we can do now is go look at specific games and fix whatever issues they happen to have. And like I mentioned earlier, it- it's still lying to your game to say, this, no, 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 that's an AMD GPU, trust me. Uh, and uh, it just allows for the generic vendor neutral dispatch of the Vulcan calls in this case. And uh, yeah, no, that that's good actually allowing people to make use of all the stuff that NVIDIA has been doing for however long uh, that they've been introducing in the driver and just being able to use it. That Dri- Driver level good. optimizations and hardware <laughs> level optimizations. You, yes. got, you can't forget that NVIDIA has like specific hardware for like, oh, you want to do this really expensive operation? Don't worry about it. You don't have to write it correctly. Yeah. We'll just do it for you. Um, I, for one, <laughs> would just like uh, once again to thank Valve for throwing money at a problem. 
because that mm-hmm. yeah. fucking works in this case. Now, Lutris wine. How is that different than regular Lutris or just regular wine? Ah, uh, well, this one's maintained is... by Tannis Roots. Oh, okay. And, and it comes in two <laughs> varieties now. Mm. Yes. Yeah, you get, you get the F Shack and the non F Shack version. <laughs> I, I need the L Shack, though, baby. So, yes, we are talking about Lutris wine 613. As Jordan was saying, two variants to play around with. And um, there's a couple of points with this. This will have the uh, FSR, which I know a lot of people are very curious about. They want to play around. Keep in mind that you're only able to use that with uh, DXVK and VKD3D titles running native Vulcan. And uh, this does fix the issue with origin logins. Uh oh, my camera died. Uh oh. Uh oh. Darkness imprisoning me. For oh, the uh, GTA 5s. So, you guys uh, take it away. See if you can fill some time. Yeah. Uh, yes. uh, so you, you're you're gonna you're gonna want this uh, because there's some occasionally there are issues with like Proton GE and um, and Lutris uh, and of course this is just the version that Lutris maintains and tests against. So it's all it's always useful to have that as a alternative because sometimes things don't work in Proton, sometimes things don't work in Vanilla Wine. So it's good to have many many options available. And you know the they do a pretty good job of keeping all the latest funky patches in. Um, Mm-hmm. Though, um, yeah. So ha- having having F Shack in will be uh, will be interesting. Hopefully, that means that uh, by default we'll start seeing some more Lutus runners that are taking advantage of it, and uh, hopefully getting some better performance there. Yeah, and for all the non Steam games, because Proton was made to work specifically from to be called from within Steam to set up the environment for everything from within Steam. So everything that's running outside of Steam, you were kind of rolling the dice on whether or not that would actually work. But yeah, for all of those epic exclusives and all the other uh, launchers, everything that doesn't have its own Steam version, you get FSR. FSR all the you things, get FSR, and you get the and you get FSR <laughs> and you get FSR the full screen and hack you get bees. and everything else. <laughs> uh, you get all of that, and you get to actually enjoy the games and play them properly. It's it's a good time to be playing video games on Linux, which is something that I never actually expected to say when even when we first got Steam, it's like yeah, it's only a fraction of the games nowadays. It's like oh, it's only the ones with uh, anti cheat. That that's it. And that gets <laughs> an entire segment. So, up next, uh, <laughs> Orbital Flight is open. So apparently, this is a massively popular thing that I didn't know about. Yeah, uh, well, if you, there are definitely people who are fans of that like retro booster esque style of uh, accurate game, and uh, or- Orbital Orbital Flight is one of these games where it's basically just a physics sandbox. You can fly around the solar system and sort of get an idea of what it's like to actually fly a spaceship around in space. Um, the developer has open sourced it though; it's done under the MIT license, uh, and has posted the code on GitHub. The build instructions, though, require Visual Studio, Boo. which means no Linux version <laughs> yet. Oh, yeah, right. Yet. Challenge accepted. <laughs> yep. You just threw down that gauntlet. It is using CMake, though. It is, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so that you can tell Visual Studio to just export uh, yeah. CMakes so you can make it yeah. work. Oh, uh, <laughs> You will need a copy of the game data for the for the actual like planets and stuff to actually run the game. This doesn't come with all of the art assets. Okay. So that 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 is one consideration. But uh, ho- hopefully soon we're going to start seeing some intrepid Linux users who like to fly around space uh, hack this into something that you can run. Do you, do you think we'll see it by the um, end of August? Maybe. Hmm. It depends on how motivated these people are, right? Come on. It, it, it's like a Kerbal space program for big kids. That like yeah, that's what I, that was the reaction that we got on our Discord when this bit of news came out. It's like, eh, I'll just keep playing Kerbal space program. It's fine. <laughs> that never stuck with me outside of uh, just playing around with Kerbal way back when it, I'm like, hey, new Linux game. Neat. Here's the money. And uh, yeah. Yeah, build a rocket ship, some, watch it explode. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. No. There, there are some people who went hard into Kerbal, though. Like. Oh, they, they're, they're still very hard and into Kerbal, yeah. yes. Uh, I mean, more power to them, man. Uh, yeah. orbital, <laughs> orbital, uh, orbital mechanics are fascinating. But 700,000 lines of code, and 20 years later, it's still running in the terminal. Uh, Yeah, it's still running in the terminal, and it is still exactly what a lot of people 
came to love for it. Built by a single person, Dwarf Fortress. Uh, Stack Overflow. No, <laughs> you can't go there to copy the code for uh, Dwarf Fortress, but How do you I can make go there to read. Fortress? <laughs> How is Dwarf Fortress? You can go there to read the interview form? with the developer, <laughs> uh, Tarn Adams. And uh, yeah, it is absolutely crazy he actually goes into a lot of like the okay so biggest refactor change it's a very technical interview like biggest refactor or change oh, that you had to just, make but what are we doing this not for our audience we, we need a uh, blinky shiny shit go on it, it, there's youtube videos that you can click oh, on in okay. between oh, uh, the yeah <laughs> uh, there's also a couple of links to specific examples that he sends out. Uh, the one that stuck out uh, that stuck out to me was the very last one, uh, where he just asks, "Okay, so what's like the weirdest bug you ever had?" Um, and apparently, it's a very known, very well known bug in the um, Dwarf Fortress uh, development, which is th the one where cats were uh, dragging, uh, were walking on spilt alcohol. And then while they were cleaning themselves, they were licking and ingesting the alcohol. And then they were dying of alcohol poisoning. <laughs> so if you actually look at that, the way that a game has to, you know, track everything that it happens, it has to track that, you know, a, an alcoholic beverage was spilt. It, that thing is now on that floor. If an object like the cat tracks over that, that carries the alcohol, and then the cat... Pedro, or cats the just freaking objects game, to you? <laughs> yes. No, that's the thing. The, the freaking game is actually tracking the when the cat is cleaning itself. The game is tracking the ingestion through cleaning process. That's how deep this goes. If you, you know, the, every single time that we've talked about, like... Um, Tales of Majeal, or if you've ever watched a video about Are you trying to say cut, after 20 years, shit might have some layers to it? Oh, it's got layers on layers on layers. Now, the more like the, <laughs> the warning, the PSA to this don't let your cats walk on alcohol, make them walk in. Some don't, don't let your cats play Dwarf Fortress. Fair point. They're never going to leave know, the computer. To give you a comparison, uh, I very much like Dark Souls, obviously, uh, and. That those games, all three of them have stupidly unexplained and very complex mechanics that they're there if you want to invest the time and actually track everything that they do. Compared to Dwarf Fortress, it's a Fisher Price toy. <laughs> That's the magnitude of difference. But how, here. <laughs> but how do you dodge roll in Dwarf Fortress, though? <laughs> You can play in adventure mode. You can either have the, you manage the fortress itself as in more strategic type of situation, or you can play in just roguelike mode so with all of those mechanics me working around you. everyone the real question uh, for the kids out there. I grew up playing it um, like at the tail end of university because that's when I bare, last year of graduate school, I got a laptop because um, I'm old. Uh, did anyone else kill time uh, in school? Because that was kind of one of the games that didn't suck up a lot of battery power, and you could play it without a 3D acceleration. Uh, Rogue. That was that was my that was my game. Ah, o OG Rogue. Uh, Pokemon. <laughs> I had Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon's on the Game Boy. Mm. <laughs> I, I mean, it's a little more obvious when you have like a Game Boy out in class <laughs> as opposed to just like sitting at a laptop. Yeah, it's not working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a laptop till the university, so. <laughs> If Don't they, care about your academic performance. LGC cares. Uh, again, I would have not been able to get through schooling if Wi-Fi was a thing. There's fuck all way if I'd had internet access. That's the only thing. I was glad Google was a thing because that's how I got my master's degree. See, Google was a thing. classes were shit. And the, it, I'm just saying, allegedly, maybe the educational system wasn't quite up to snuff to finding like the uh, research papers that have been done. Mm -hmm. Um mm. All right. Well, coming up next, we try and fail to color in between the lines. Oh, boy. You know, as I often say, people say to people, I don't, I don't see color, which probably explains why I have a lot of trouble playing Color Breakers, uh, developed by Delion, done on the Unity engine. Uh, you can pick it up for about fourteen bucks US. What is it? Color Breakers is a chaotic one to four local and online multiplayer co-op game. Uh, where players need to work together 
in each of the levels to complete as many paintings as possible. We got to thank Dillion for sending us some thank you. keys. And I I'm guess much now <laughs> let's uh, let's head on hand it over to you, Pedro, to tell us how he won. He won. He lost, or he drew. Hang on, I, I got to go to Pedro <laughs> and hang on. And three, two, begin. Okay. So uh, it over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the uh, GTX 1080, it launched out of the box. It holds 144 FERPs at 2560 by 1440. And the graphics do their job. And I'm sure the decision to make certain bits hard to see in some levels was very much intentional. Case in point, you're probably looking at the video right now. I did have to enable a seam input for the dual shock and the dual sense to work properly. All of the uh, X input controllers, those work fine. That's fine. Um, as for the fun, it, it needs multiplayer, this one. It really does. Uh, without it, it's just a bit too much on the side of frustrating and boring because, yeah, it's just you against the clock and you have to draw the painting that you see on the top left there. Do that and do as many paintings as you can. And if you do well enough, you get three stars in a level, much like you would in a typical mobile game. But if you're doing it alone, that that's it. That's all you got going for you. Uh, and if you have more people, it means you have more pencils drawing what you need and you get through those drawings much quicker. It also allows for multiplayer specific shenanigans where it, it adds that uh, organic element to the fun and <laughs> it's kind of necessary. Now, it's not a bad game by any chance, but you need a multiplayer to fully enjoy it. And as a big fan as I am of uh, Yahtzee Croshaw, I disagree with him very much on the point that he says that every game needs to stand on its own single player. No, no, it doesn't. And this game, probably if it, the single player was a bit more interesting, I would have played it for a bit longer, but it wasn't. So it gets two chairs. Two chairs coming in at, oh, minute and eight seconds left. Not bad, Pedro. Jordan. Ooh, all right. Uh, on. on Fedora, 34, 64 bit. I can reset. I can reset. This is new, <laughs> this is new events technology. And oh, go. All right. All right. All right. Fedora, 34, 64 bit with the R9 3900 Next GTX 1080 Ti. It launches out of the box, holds 60 at UHD. But let's be real, it's not graphically demanding. We're in a low texture world with voxels. Um, there are minimal graphical options, but then again, you're painting pixels. So just being able to switch from full screen to not is probably all you need. Uh, control works. It has the most generic button prompts. So <laughs> if you have an Xbox or a PlayStation controller, it just tells you which where the position of the thing is. I'm not is. against that, really. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when it when it boils down to it, like it works. Um so yeah, uh fun wise, yeah, it blows when you're on your lonesome. Color between the lines on a clock, and the controls are just loose enough that you'll mess up everyone every now and again. And you don't stand a chance once the game starts throwing curveballs at you, like the level shaking, or the moving platforms, or the part where like this level here, where um the 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 shakiness will actually fuck up your painting because the pencils will land lead down and like fuck up the thing. And this is where players two through four come in and throw that in, and you have a semi-entertaining time. One problem I do kind of have with the advancement is it goes by the time three rules you need to collect enough stars to advance meaning that you and your squad better get good at guessing squares i can really see this only being okay for a party game or like a post stream stream thing but the staying power once goes away once you realize you can't really fail your way to success which i would argue in a party game is kind of a necessary attribute considering one or more of your players are likely going to be shit hammered while they're playing it so you want to make sure that you can at least kind of goof your way into winning so that people are at least engaged i'll give it two chairs it's all right but it needs more 120. Well done, sir. Well done. Ah, oh, damn it. Now my own medicine. Fine. In three. <laughs> <laughs> Click. Over here on Debian. Bullseye on the Threadripper 1920X uh, 2060 powered box of business that we're streaming on right now. It launched out of the box. It picked up the X Clone XS controller. No problem there. Windowed mode. Happy to see that. And as you might have guessed, it's not a graphical juggernaut, so you're able to get 60. FPS at 1080p and 2160 with my little 2060 non cape edition. Now, the fun, as everyone kind of pointed out, single player is draw against the clock while dealing with random fuckery. I would say it's a good practice, but uh, you basically just grab shit and draw. That's pretty much the game, no matter if you're playing by yourself or with other people. Seriously, one thing this game has going for it is the accessibility, simply because I jumped into multiplayer with Jordan without having read the fucking manual at all. 
took me about 30 seconds to put two and 13 together and we got going. We made progress until shit got on fire. Then I had to learn about um, how to put that out. What do you do? You, you draw the patterns. You, uh, yeah, putting out fires while trying to draw this. You dodge traffic. Rotating boards and other assorted nonsense. Like sometimes the board splits. That got in my way a couple of times. Now, uh, all while doing your best to cover within the lines, which we all suck at. Having player two did keep things interesting since there's always the R and fuckery that will go around between success and failure. Multiplayer works via room codes. And apparently there's a lobby that I couldn't figure out how to get into if you want to play uh, with randos. But at the end of the day, it is a fun little party game and it does what it needs to do. Though it is $14.99. There's a bunch of skins and stuff like that you get as rewards. So yeah, I'll give it a solid two. Um... Nothing necessarily wrong with it, except single player, uh, to agree with both of you lads. It's kind of more. It, it just needs people. Yeah. yeah like, it is. Yeah. You really like, need the, the, the extra pencils and the extra added fuckery of just having people yeah. mess it up. Yeah. Yeah. It like, it, it's been, so you, you got a really easy pattern for your first pattern here, which made, which gave you a shot at actually completing it. But my first pattern was something <laughs> like this. So it's like, get fucked as all the pencils are like diving around and like dotting the board. And there was a, uh, uh, yeah, when me and you were playing and we were not using voice to communicate. So, it, I mean, it yeah. is completely little. There were, there was a couple of uh, patterns that we got that I felt like the comic with the chameleon going over plaid, like, Fuck this. Yes. Um, <laughs> right. Like. <laughs> so we pulled it off. Um, well done, um, Dylan team. So, yeah. I, uh, yeah. Just the one person. No. Andres de Leo. Andres. Very good job. <laughs> good not, work, not, 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 not Ponce de Leon. No, it's no fountain. <laughs> Coming up next, I am error. You are error. We are error. I am error. Zelda 2 reference. Keep, Come on. I, I thought you could be I or Ninja. No. <laughs> it's finally here. The end of the show. <laughs> and uh, if you'd like to let us know, you know, if you like long shows, if you like shorter shows, there's a very easy way to do it. You can go to lacegamecast.com. You hit the contact button. There's a form you got to fill. L- LGC Weekly is the show to send your hate mail to. Otherwise, we will be inclined to misconstrue it as a uh, constructive feedback. Or maybe you can even uh, send Jordan a question about relationship advice. It's all up to you. The options are there. There's the caveats at the top. You may want to read those. Just fuck all saying. that. LGC <laughs> taught me how to count numbers so I can read timestamps. <laughs> There's that too. Yes. <laughs> okay. One, two, five. That's right. Purple 13. We were wrong about something. Yes. Technically, yes, Reddit was wrong about it. Okay, you know what? <laughs> Listen, if we, we, we and we, we parroted that with confidence, we can Pedro wiggle our way mm-hmm. out of this one if we try real hard. Okay, this is from uh, <laughs> EIREXE, the developer of um, Alex. Alex, yes, the developer uh, of Alex Project Heartbeat. Yes. <laughs> Project Heartbeat. <laughs> he writes, "I believe there was a mistake. I was catching up on the podcast, and I believe." There are, are not any Steam Deck dev kits in the wild yet. The image you saw is from the Steamworks development page. I want you to be 100% correct. <laughs> I'm kidding. I want Steam Deck's dev kits to have been out for months. Months. <laughs> and everyone's under, we will kill your kit in NDAs. And no one's made a peep about it. I hope they have been. I hope they genuinely are not, didn't start shipping last week or they're not going to ship until the end of next month or something because what's the fucking point, right? Um, If they're coming out in December. But yeah, yeah, 100% fair point. Um, Well, so so, so, uh, hold on, because Gary, Gary, you know, our our best friend in the world, Gary Newman, Uh was making some claims and we were talking about them that would preclude that something exists i mean we don't know how long that has been in the um Mm -hmm. steamworks developer side of things because we don't really look at it to be fair yeah (laughs) and well okay it it probably does boil down to this uh many developers these games uh steam's probably not shooting those out i am sure if you're a larger company or you got you know if you're like face punch you probably have had your hands on one before now 
Um, Face Punch also yeah. has like a long history with Valve too. Yeah. Like Gary's, Gary's mod, mod is like one of the right. OG OG Half Life things. So, I'm like, sure they've yeah. been sprinkled about here and there because what we've mm-hmm. seen is this is the pictures of hey this this is what's going to ship yo. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm sure there's some earlier versions. You know, like these Areola controller, the one that had the touchpad on shit like that on it. So uh, yeah, you're right. We cocked that up. We're wrong. It's all Pedro's fault. Yes. It usually is. <laughs> well, according to uh, the second bit of a uh, hate mail, it absolutely is. Yeah, this 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 one's from Predator 8 you Bit. Shill. And they said they said, Pedro, you shouldn't shit on the AMD drivers having proprietary blobs as much as you do. At least their code or their code is somewhat open source. Who knows? Maybe in the future partially open efforts like AMD GPU lead to fully open drivers. Yeah, that's how that works. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, which example do you want? Oh, maybe in the future, if I keep doing this, I'll become a mildly entertaining podcaster. Doubt. That's not. Don't don't, don't hold your breath. (laughs) Or maybe do. Maybe that will make you more entertaining if you hold your breath. (laughs) No, it's. uh, Yeah, no. Uh, If you want, like, truly open source drivers, uh, grab a Matrox card or. Intel, yeah, Intel, the Intel um, GPU Z. drivers, those are fully open source. Wi-Fi, not so much. But uh, the GPU drivers, yeah, you could just get full OpenGL acceleration out of that. Now, I remember I well, every, every time you say this, I'm like, oh, somebody's going to get upset. I'm like, wait, 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 what do you mean? Uh, um, <laughs> like, yeah, you didn't know that, did you? Like, uh, you know, that, that resulted in a Google search. Like, oh, huh. And wow. everyone then goes uh, to, oh, but uh, AMD, they've always been open sourcing stuff like FSR and whatever hair works Which thing they had going Trust on. Effects. Yeah, uh, yeah that, was, that is great. Making that stuff available to everyone. Source but, so let, let, and everything. Let's, let's be real, though. That is tossing it over the fence because yes. they couldn't get other vendors on. Earlier board. today, or I, yeah. I, I'm not making this up. I, I was uh, following in the uh, OBS developer Discord, where somebody was like, "Hey, did you think it would be possible if we could somehow work um, FSR into scaling into OBS?" Then the discussion, I'm like, "Fucking why?" Which eventually turned into like, "I bet we could do it." Um, then they go through. Then of course the conversation was like, "Wouldn't it be neat if AMD released something and supported it?" No. Yeah. <laughs> because even their drivers on Windows, we've seen the horror stories and all the news articles. They're not very good. And if you try to install the proprietary drivers uh, on Linux, they're bad. Well, they've always been traditionally, even back with ATI, but the uh, <laughs> fantastic work from the open source uh, development community, Mesa and all that. Uh, Collabora, the, that's the big one. Yeah, been, they they are the real MVPs uh, there. L- L- Lunar Lunar G as well. They've been putting a ton of effort into it. Hundred percent. And you know, so the, unless someone goes full nouveau and actively tries to reverse engineer those uh, proprietary bits, this is the best we're gonna get. Well, I mean, it boils down to the end of the day. I mean, if you're playing video games uh, <laughs> and you're pretty much gonna be sticking to video games, AMD's an awesome fucking choice. You got it. You gotta do it. Mm-hmm. If you gotta do some work. Not really on the cards on Linux so much because um, the proprietary drivers suck and uh, new versions of Blender are not going to support OpenCL. And uh, yeah, the OpenCL support in DaVinci Resolve is kind of poo-poo too. But hey. Yeah. Uh, on, the, on, on the bright side, <laughs> you do get to plug your video card into your unmodified Linux system and oh, it will just fucking work. This is true. And you also get to yeah. use like recent fucking kernels <laughs> NVIDIA. But then again, <laughs> it, it, it's give or take. But hey, op- yeah, it's options pro, are good. Yeah, I mean, a hundred percent. If I wasn't doing encoding, if I didn't have to run um, Resolve, which I know you can say, but you can not use the Resolve. It's like yes, I can use KDE Live and spend four hours like I used to burning energy. Why do you hate the environment as opposed to spending eighteen <laughs> minutes with Resolve to render the same video? Um, yeah, uh, I, I want to live in a world where. Uh, AMD is like super awesome, awesome and supportive of desktop Linux because as much as I agree with this guy back here doing that with some NVIDIA shit that's went down, NVIDIA does care about the Linux desktop for whatever reason they do. They, they, Somehow, they care about yeah. it because that's what de- develops on NVIDIA on the server. Let's, I, let's be like, real. They, they fix Proton <laughs> shit. I mean, you're yeah. like, oh, and why? they made DLSS available yeah. for Proton. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> for, for, for the for the three games that use it at, at the end of the day don't don't completely embrace any soulless corporation over another yeah no no, no. Make, you make, gotta make, look at the make goods the transistors of one yourself and, and build your own video cards the goods of the right. others like that, like that the one, the one guys ladies and gentlemen <laughs> on that non controversial bombshell let's bounce the fuck out of here hey thanks for showing up and hanging out with us it was a, a very warm toasty episode and i think everything's going to survive blam but if you want to get a hold of me i'm just at vin stone on twitter that's where i hang out and uh at vin because we have a mastodon and that's right that's right dak if you want to friend me on mastodon you gotta read what it says you gotta have the profile picture or i'm gonna pretend you're a bot and i'm not going to accept your request that might be a true story right now that's why you're not approved um, at Vin on mass.linuxemcast.com. Beep boop. I am Jordan Robot. You can follow me on Twitter at the Burning Fool or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. And I am Peter Matos. I'm not quite as hot as Vin, as has been established on many an occasion. Uh, he's also much thinner than I am, so. <laughs> advantages the <laughs> best way to get in touch with me is to go to linux ga- uh, well linux gamecast oh, and if you hit the yeah. contact button and ask ask me something in specific it'll eventually make a, its way leave, to me leave a comment on the YouTube pedro. video pedro will pedro, always we have be an entire we have an entire <laughs> e-stalking segment with all your information yes yeah there's the the about, uh, page. the about pages you can see everything our email addresses our Twitters at, at accounted for there for me go. specifically. That's yeah. Credits. <laughs> wow. It took him so long to get to that fucking point. My God. I, I got to get a timer for that. <laughs> it's like the show's been going on for two hours already. No, no, we need to make it longer. Pad Pedro. I mean, I could, Pad, I like could your say life that's on because it. Uh, you two assholes kept the uh, Interjecting, but okay. Yeah, well, we, we we gotta. Well, <laughs> screw that shit. We gotta thank Omegas and Arthur and our advisors and our executive producers, Aldius, Bob Ram, Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Atomic Cats, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer Seven, Holy Toast, and Kohaku, and our little Nikki fans, keeping it real, Dark Wing, and Abstraction. And the Sea Monsters, Jack, Renault, Rider X, Magna, Trudgy, Vertinu, Justin, Frostclaw, and Kyle Lennox. We've got our Death Notes and coming down with another K, Basil, Chad, oh. Romeo, Marcin, System T, Craig, M, Renee, Leonardo, Dak, Kim, Smash, Chris, Steve, and Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2. Watt, Steve, B, and Dirty Dean. Thunder we have G- a lot of Steves. <laughs> Too many Steves. Jasons, and Joels, and Brocks, and Paolo. No, we only have the one Paolo. We, we need a Steve uh, deathmatch. We need to get them all Mr. in a cage. Alert. Simcha. And uh, Jonas Rolo. We'll get Michael all the Steves w. together for a finger painting contest. Yeah. <laughs> Zeno, Daniel, Belric, Alcade, and back. Man, Thank you're you already stretching back. those credits out, Pedro. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Wait, we need the post credit scene. Where's Nick Fury? <laughs> We're going to join the Avengers. All right, everyone, make your goodbye face. We got to say goodnight. I don't know. I was going to make my Nick Cage face. There you go. <laughs> That's what, what the fuck was that? What was some some blue steel Magnum shit? Five dudes. <laughs> <laughs>